What's up, universe? Before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. Now, normally, C-dubs will be covering the Doom Patrol recaps slash reviews here on the Comic Universe, but since he couldn't make this one, I'm filling in for this week, but he will be back next week. Um, and because I didn't feel like recording two separate recordings where I will say essentially the same thing, I decided to just kind of re-upload um, my individual review that I put up on my channel onto here. So I apologize for this extreme sense of deja vu if you've already watched my review on my channel. But C-Dubs will be back hopefully next week to review episode 2 for you guys and he'll be covering this season of the Doom Patrol um, from 2 onwards. But with that little housekeeping out of the way, on to the intro and I'll see you there universe. <laughs> What up guys, it's Jay here from Mr. Reviews, and I'm back once again with another review for you guys, and this time I am here to review the brand new DC Universe original series, Doom Patrol, Season 1, Episode 1, Pilot. Now, as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode, and going over our thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, hop on your DC Universe app, borrow somebody's password, do what you gotta do, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below, because I will be going into spoilers. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, yeah, I have been really looking forward to this show for a while now. Ever since the Titans episode of Doom Patrol, I was really intrigued by this cast of characters, their dynamics. Uh, I am honestly not all that familiar with the Doom Patrol. I've read a tiny bit of the... Gerard Way, Young Animal version of Doom Patrol that came out recently, a few years back, and I've read a handful of the Morrison stuff, but and I'm not super familiar with the Doom Patrol. I know they're weird, I know they're wacky, I know that they're like, sort of DC's answer to the X-Men, and uh, like there's debate on which one came out first, because they both came out around the same time, and have very similar concepts people that were outcasts of society being taken in by a man with a vision who happened to also be in a wheelchair and British. What did I think about this first episode? This was a pretty standard pilot to be honest with you guys. Uh, it's like a character introduction for each of our main cast members. Well except for Cyborg. Cyborg has not officially shown up yet but we get our origin stories for our main cast which include Rita, Cliff, Larry, and Crazy Jane. So, the episode itself mainly centers around Cliff, a.k.a. Robot Man. And, I gotta say, that was pretty cool. He was probably the strongest part, but then again, he also got the most screen time. Um, we see Cliff's story is nothing really to write home about. You know, he was a race car driver into NASCAR, he got a big ego, started flexing a little too hard, bought a big house, had, you know, has the hot wife, daughter, everything's going right, uh, he's messing up everywhere, left, right, uh, and he's doing all kinds of crazy stuff, um, drinking, on drugs, sleeping with a nanny, and pretty much every bad thing you can do he checked it off the list and then in one of his races he finds out that his pit crew manager or his crew manager is sleeping with his wife uh, as kind of revenge for finding out that he's been sleeping out with the nanny and at first we think like okay so he crashed in the race and then the chief ends up rebuilding him. And we actually spend most of the time seeing Cliff's rehabilitation process. Um, him learning to walk again and like using the memories of his daughter and her learning to walk as ways to help him do it and help him accomplish this goal. And then uh, throughout that we get to kind of see a time lapse and we get to see um, him interact with the different 
members of the Doom Patrol, or at least, I guess, for now, just the different residents of the house. Larry and Rita in particular, and then Crazy Jane shows up later. Um, but now let's quickly touch on Rita before we talk more about Cliff. We'll talk more about Cliff uh, as we talk about the later parts of the episode. But uh, Rita, uh, she is an actress from the 50s, so as you can see, the Doom Patrol are people that are from scattered different eras in time. So Rita is from the 50s, and she's a famous actress who ends up being exposed to some chemicals or bitten by a creature. It was really kind of unclear what happened. While on set in Africa, she falls into like a river and she either gets exposed to some chemicals or bitten by some kind of creature and that's how she gets all face melty. And I gotta say, man, like the body horror element of this show, whoa, man, I was impressed. The CGI was a little wonky at first uh, when we see um, Blob Rita later on in the episode, but I was surprised at how good it looked. Um, and by good, I mean, like, ugh, terrifying. But, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Shows me that you could seriously do a good clay face in live action if Doom Patrol can pull off Rita. Um, and Rita herself along with all the other members of the Doom Patrol, they all have very deep-seated psychological issues. Now, Cliff, of course, he has this kind of perpetual sense of guilt because of, you know, he at first thinks that he's the one who messed everything up. He crashed and he died. Um, he left his wife alive and you know, his daughter by themselves and it was his fault. But then later he discovers that um, he actually did fix things or try to fix things and they were on the way to kind of patching up their relationship and then on the drive back they end up getting into a massive car wreck and his wife and daughter die. Or so we think. Later it's revealed that his daughter is actually alive. Or actually it's not fully confirmed, but it's heavily implied that she is alive. So that's interesting. Now Cliff has a reason to leave. He has a reason to care again. And that's kind of the thing, right? Um, Cliff's psychological issue is apathy. He stops caring about the world after all the stuff happened with his kid um, and his family. And you could tell in the Titans episode, really, that he kind of saw Gar as that second chance at having a kid. Um, he treated Gar like his kid, like his annoying son. <laughs> um, or more of a little brother, I guess. But, like, I feel like within the context of the Doom Patrol backdoor pilot, if you watch that back to back, you really kind of get a sense of Cliff, and it gives him even more depth uh, if you rewatch the Titans episode after you watch the Doom Patrol pilot. So that's cool. But yeah, back to Rita. Um, like I said, she um she ends up getting all face melty. Um, and we see her later in the episode when they go into the town after she has a conversation with this waitress at a diner about Rita Farr, the actress, and. She, um, she talks about, like, yeah, my dad mentioned, like, that they replaced her mid-picture during that African flick, and she did porn after that whole failure since she got replaced, um, and the whole reason she got replaced was because she was a drunk, blah, 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 blah. Of course, Rita starts getting stressed, starts panicking, and that's when she goes all blobby. And then Cliff tries to save the town by... Um, creating a barrier out of uh, Main Street. And lo and behold, when everything is going to crap, <laughs> that's when uh, Larry's negative man entity um, releases itself from him and starts kind of causing chaos and havoc. And then, of course, Crazy Jane, or should I say Hammerhead, uh, starts flipping out on cops and then also starting a scene 
uh, throughout town. Now, back to the characters though, let me jump back to Rita because I didn't actually finish Rita. Rita, her issue is kind of a narcissism problem. Not even kinda, it's definitely a narcissism problem. She's so obsessed with herself and how she used to be and how she used to be put on this pedestal that when people question her and you know being looked at and not being seen as perfect um that facade cracks and she starts to get all like gelatiny or gelatinous blobby however you want to describe it and i think that's a really cool kind of metaphor with her powers because you know if you know anything about old school 50s Hollywood starlets always put up an image and always had to craft a persona a mask right and that mask it's hard to crack but once it does that's when the starlet falls apart and that's Rita's whole problem her mask was finally cracked at that Africa trip because people finally stopped seeing her as the beautiful unquestionable starlet and saw her as imperfect and then that freaked her out it kind of caused her to spiral and that's really interesting on its own okay so now we jump to Larry Larry is a pilot from the 60s um, who tested this experimental rocket plane and when he goes up into the atmosphere he ends up being hit by what looks like cosmic rays uh, it turns out to be the negative entity um, that possesses his body he ends up crash landing and walking out of the fire all burnt and whatnot and forever changed which is why he's in the bandages and the shades also that explains why him and Rita are super close and Rita kind of talks for Larry and makes decisions for Larry because out of everybody in the house you know they are from the two closest eras the early 60s and the late 50s so they kind of understand each other better like their mindsets are kind of similar and also we find out that Larry was in the closet you know he was gay and that's also again an interesting metaphor for his powers he has this entity inside him his this thing inside him that's negative that's eating away at him that wants to come out but he constantly tries to and forces to be suppressed just saying that's my personal interpretation maybe I'm reading too much into it maybe I'm thinking too hard maybe it's just a cool superpower and he wants to be a mommy dude with shades who knows now let's talk about crazy Jane crazy Jane is pretty straightforward uh, it's pretty much legion <laughs> you know split personality multiple personalities with several different powers for each individual personality now we didn't see any with particular powers the only personalities we met were Jane herself the default personality the hangman's daughter which is kind of the dreary existential persona and we've got hammerhead which is the abrasive aggressive kind of jerk persona she's kind of angry at the world um now crazy Jane that's pretty straightforward she's just kind of nuts and it's the result of a fractured mind and we'll probably get more backstory on her later but I'm definitely really interested in her Diana Guerrero does a really good job at portraying the different personalities now she's no James McAvoy but she definitely does a good job and I have fun watching her do what she does and I really like her bond with Cliff and her trying to help Cliff out um, by going into town on his daughter's birthday to buy the toy and then she kind of drops the bombshell that his daughter might still be alive and it's likely alive and like they have that really cute scene where like she smokes the joint and she blows the smoke into his like mouth hole thingy mouth slot and she's like nothing nothing and he's just like <sighs> 
It's gotta suck for you, Cliff. Sucks to be you. After that, we end up seeing the chief discovers all this chaos, and he's like, oh, well, we gotta move. We're getting the hell out of Dodge. We gotta go. Our enemies are gonna come after us. Well, not our enemies, but in particular, my enemies. Now, this brings us to our narrator, Mr. Nobody, who it seems like is one of the chief's original experiments. And now he's out for revenge, and they've kind of done this song and dance before, um, which is why he hides away in Doom Manor. Now, I don't know exactly why, um, he is after the chief and how he was able to hide for so long, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. Um, the episode itself ends at the beginning of a climactic battle when the Doom Patrol faces off against Mr. Nobody. Um, now I don't know how you can beat what seems to be a reality warper with a robot, <laughs> negative man, Elastigirl who doesn't even really know how to use her elasticity, and a Crazy Jane, unless Crazy Jane has some crazy nigh omnipotent persona like if you hit Alien X on the Omnitrix. Now if you don't get that Ben 10 reference, you're way too young to be watching this video. That's pretty much it for this episode. It was really weird, it's really fun, really interesting, dope intro. Uh, I like it. I'm gonna keep going with it. I'm gonna stick around for the entire season. Because I'm intrigued. I really want to know what's the chief's deal and what is this whole thing. Why does he do what he does? That's my biggest question and I want that to be answered. But let me know what you guys thought about the episode in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like so that you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And in my outro card, I'll leave links a video YouTube mysterious algorithm, things you might like, which I hope you do. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mysterious Reviews. And like I always say, once a combo geek, always a combo geek. And once a Doom Patrol fan, always a Doom Patrol fan. Hopefully, next week, I'll see you again if I'm not doomed. But until then, peace. Thank you.